Hi everybody, Dr. Pingle here. Uh, in this section of the notebook, we're going to work on colorizing a LiDAR point cloud. Um, so typically LiDAR point clouds are not colorized, um, although in the future that might change. Uh, but most of the time when you download those things now, all you're getting is an X, Y, and Z coordinate uh, for each point, uh, and um, an intensity value um, that you can use to uh, sort of get a, a general sense of how light or dark, uh, what it is you're looking at. Uh, that intensity value though can vary based on um, some other characteristics, uh, and so that one is not um, totally reliable um, for visualization, uh, but, it, but it's fairly good. Um, so what we might want to do instead is colorize the point cloud based on an imagery layer that we have. Um, now typically what you want to do uh, is try to match up the imagery with the, um, with the date of the file that you're looking at. So if we are um, taking a look at uh, the data that we've been working with for Blacksburg, um, we could um, take a look at one of these things with um, LAS view uh, to get a sense of uh, what the uh, uh, file creation date is. Or um, if we have uh, the data loaded up into uh, ArcGIS, uh, we, can, uh, we can look at the metadata there. So let's, let's do that quick. Uh, we're going to go into uh, our uh, original data that we downloaded. Um, and if it's... Um, uh, ArcGIS that you're looking at, you can actually use the original file if you wanted to. There's no difference between using this and the, um, the LAS file. Um, but we can right click on this and look at the properties um, and look at the source file here. Um, and uh, we can get a sense of uh, both the, um, how many points are in the file, uh, the vertical units, so in this case this is feet. Uh, we can get a look at the bounding box, um, the spatial reference. Um, uh, so lots of uh, lots of the data that we might be interested in uh, are encoded here. Uh, in this case, though, uh, what we wanted to know was when is it? Uh, when when was this data set created? And as you can see, that's not um, listed in there. So we're going to go ahead and use LAS view um, to figure this out. Uh, so we'll go in here and go into binary. And use LAS view and we'll just open this up. So what we have here is a, a source ID. Um, it says created uh, 147 slash 2010. So that's our year, uh, 2010. And 147, as we said, is a Julian date. Uh, if you look for a Julian date, um, you'll get something that looks like this. Uh, I always like to just look at the images um, because you'll get one of these charts uh, that essentially just says um, what this is. So this one in particular is for leap years because uh, there's an extra day, uh, February 29th, but um, <clears throat> 147 in this case is going to be close enough, uh, so this would correspond to May uh, of uh, May 26th, uh, 2010. So uh, where would we get uh, imagery from, from that? So ordinarily when we, when we download imagery, we might just use the national map, uh, but the national map only has current imagery, at least that's the case uh, as of the time of this recording, um, it might be that someday that they uh, post historical imagery. Uh, but if we want this historical stuff, what we can do is we can go look at the, um, the, na the historical NAEP imagery. Um, so this is linked off of a box.com account. Um, all of these are sorted by year. Um, and there's this file right here that says NAEP file name. That's a nice little um, uh, key into what it is that you're, uh, or uh, uh, how you can sort of find the file that you're interested in. So all of the NAEP files here are going to be um, organized. Uh, so this is the um, uh, National Agriculture Imagery Program. Um, so we have uh, the state of Alabama. We have a code and it corresponds to a county. Uh, we're obviously interested in Virginia. Uh, that's not going to work. Let's try that. All right. So that this gets us to the Virginia section VA. And then we can just find uh, the county that we're in. So uh, we're working with Blacksburg data set, which is in Montgomery County. So this says Virginia 121. You could also look for uh, the FIPS code um, for uh, Montgomery County, uh, Virginia. And you could find it here and you could also see that uh, Montgomery County is located at uh, 121. So they're really just using the FIPS codes here 
Um, whatever, whatever way you want to figure that out uh, is totally fine. All right, so we're going to go back. Uh, we're, we know we're looking for county 121. Um, our imagery came from 2010, um, so we could start looking in here. Uh, we can sort by name. And we're going to do a reverse sort since we're at the bottom of the alphabet in Virginia. But you'll see there is no VA listed here. Um, the reason for that is that NAEP imagery is not always taken every year. Um, and so we just need to find something that's going to be a little bit closer. Um, I've actually browsed ahead. There is no data for 2011 either. If you go back a year uh, in 2009, uh, there is data for Virginia. So um, you'll have to use that uh, if you're working with Virginia. Uh, and then we have all of these files. And remember that we're looking for 121. So these are the FIPS codes, uh, Virginia 810. Um, so we're just going to uh, have to scroll through the list until we find 121. Uh, which you'll find on page three. So if you download this file um, or, or click on this file, you'll get an option for downloading it. You'll get some uh, metadata here that doesn't probably mean very much. Um, we don't need uh, to log in to get this data. Uh, we're just going to download this stuff uh, right here to our Blacksburg folder. Now this data is uh, a little on the large side, um, so we could, um, uh, what, we're, what we're downloading here is something on the order of 500 megabytes, so that's a little bit large. I'm going to go ahead and let that um, continue downloading, and we'll pick it up when that has arrived. Okay, so this is our, uh, this is our file, um, ortho11, uh, Virginia 121, 2009. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and extract that file. Um, this file is a SID file, um, so uh, if you haven't worked with these before, um, this is often a format that's used when you're using um, aerial imagery. Uh, the reason for that is that it compresses quite, um, quite nicely, um, so it's a highly compressed uh, raster storage format, mostly for images. Um, and so we can drag and drop this straight into um, ArcGIS to take a quick look at it. Um, the file itself unzipped, uh, just uh, taking a look at it here while we're um, uh, looking, is about 434 uh, megs, uh, so that's pretty big, uh, but this is actually the whole county. Um, so as you can see, we could zoom out here, uh, and this would be our uh, entire county. Uh, this part here is the polygon that corresponds to our um, area of interest. So this is our three by three tile that we made in a previous video. What I want to do, um, what we're going to be doing is colorizing our point cloud based on this imagery. Um, but this image is too large uh, and it's not in a format that LAS color can handle. And so we're just going to do a quick clip um, to bring this out. Um, so Okay, so um, we're actually going to use, um, I'm gonna, that's a bit of a, a hard edit here, but we're not going to do a, a clip. Uh, what I want to do is project raster. Now the reason for this is that um, to do the colorization, um, we're going to need to make sure that the coordinate system for our um, GeoTIFF file that's going to have our imagery data matches precisely to the um, projection of our original data. Um, so we're going to use project raster to do that. And um, so we're going to say uh, input raster, uh, that is our um, uh, SID file, our output raster data set. Uh, we're going to call, uh, this is a previous example that didn't work out, we're going to write over that. Um, our output coordinate system, we are going to want to declare. So we're going to set this to be the same as our, um, uh, as our uh, boundary file. Not going to worry about the geographic transformation. We are going to set the resampling techniques. Remember that that's really important. We're going to set that to bilinear. Um, you can get a quick look at the resolution of the data set that we're working with here. This is 3.28 um, feet uh, because our input coordinate system is in feet. And then the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to use um, our environment tab to actually do a crop. Uh, and we're going to crop the whole thing to an extent um, that is going to be uh, our merged shapefile. So we're essentially running the reprojection, but while we're doing that, um, we're also doing a clip um, by specifying the extent in the environment tab. 
Uh, there's a couple things we, we're doing down here that we probably don't need to do. We're building an image pyramid, which helps view these things at different zoom levels. I'm going to skip that step. I'm also calculating raster statistics, which I don't really need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uncheck that. Um, resampling, uh, this should have been set on the previous tab, but I'm going to make sure that it's set to bilinear. Uh, and we're going to hit OK. Uh, so this is going to rerun uh, or run our tool. Um, both reprojecting and clipping our tool uh, or our image um, both at the same time. Uh, so if we uncheck our um, global, what we've got left here at the bottom is this um, tab uh, or this uh, little square that we've cut out that matches neatly uh, with the LiDAR data set. Um, now that that's done, uh, we can run uh, LAS uh, color. Uh, so I've got a couple of open windows here that I'm going to close out. Uh, we're going to go into our um, directory here to LAS tools and the binary and choose LAS color. Uh, we'll browse uh, for our merged LiDAR file. Uh, so that's here. Uh, we're going to need to set our image that we're going to pull from. Uh, so we can do that over here with image. Uh, and we want to set that to Blacksburg extract. Uh, and then we need to set our outputs here. Uh, our directory is going to be uh, where we are right now. Uh, and our file name, uh, this is just going to call, we're going to call this um, colorized. Merged.las. Um, I'm going to set the format as well uh, to LAS right here. And now we can hit run. Okay. Uh, this tool should run pretty quickly. Um, so what you should be left with here uh, is, a, uh, is an output file. So here's colorized merged.las. I'm going to uh, just open that up in Cloud Compare to get a quick look at it here. Now, uh, ordinarily, we just hit OK and we bring all this stuff in. Uh, I'm just going to uncheck everything um, just for the sake of convenience here and only bring in these RGB fields, the color fields, and hit OK. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, and what you're left with is something that looks like this. Now, if you're looking at this, it'll look like an aerial photo, which is great. Uh, but if you zoom in, uh, sure enough, what we're actually looking at here is a LiDAR point cloud. Uh, but one where all of the points have been colored according to that NAEP imagery. Um, so this adds quite a lot of realism um, to your um, uh, to the to the LiDAR data. Um, if we had brought in all the intensity data, all of that still would have been there, classification data. Um, and so we can um, we really can can get quite a lot of information packed in here. Um, it's still the original LiDAR data. Um, so things like the facades of buildings are still missing. Um, and keep in mind that the colorization is really done via interpolation. So uh, a lot of the things that you're seeing in here are probably not there. Um, so for instance, we're seeing a lot of uh, cars uh, right here. Um, those cars were in the imagery, um, but were probably not in the LiDAR data set. And so there's going to be some uh, miscoloring of things. But generally, as long as you've kind of matched things up uh, pretty well, uh, trees, buildings, all of those sort of more permanent features um, should be intact. So that's it for uh, this lesson. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll uh, see you next time.